Good morning, it's Steph from Hopewell Heights. I had breakfast in the oven. I'm making a peach coffee cake this morning. It's got about 25 minutes left and while that's baking, I figured I would clean out my fridge. Well, try to clean out my fridge in my pantry. I doubt I'll get done, but you know what? I'm just gonna get started. This was not on my to-do list today, but it has gotten so bad because I've been so busy trying to keep up with the summer harvest and preserving all of it that some things, some organizational things in the kitchen have just been neglected. I'm gonna show you guys what is going on in this pantry behind me. It's not good. That is a pile of cornmeal that was in a mason jar that had got busted. There's, there's just a lot going on in here. It is not pretty, not organized, but I am about to change that. I've got lots of peaches <laughs> that we picked the other day and I'm making peach jam. I thought that this pot would be big enough. It is not big enough. I've still got a whole counter full of peaches behind me, so I need to use my huge stock pot there. Um, and I need to let my peaches rest in the fridge. So I'll post this recipe in the description. But the way that I make my jam, I don't use pectin. I just cut up my peaches, wash and cut my peaches up, then add my sugar and let it rest for like 12 to 24 hours. That's the first step. So part of my motivation for wanting to clean out the fridge and the pantry is I need to fit my huge stock pot in my fridge so that my peaches and sugar can rest. And right now I know there is no room in there. So I need to get this done ASAP. <laughs> I always feel like I have my life together more when my fridge is clean. It's kind of the same with my car too. If I have a clean car, I just feel better. I don't know, there's just something about getting into a nice clean car. So when I clean my fridge, I just get a big bowl and anything that is questionable gets dumped in said bowl and taken down to the pigs. The pigs are very grateful for all of our scraps and it makes me feel a lot less guilty about wasting. I, I try not to waste. We eat a lot of leftovers. I try every few months to not go grocery shopping and just use up as much stuff as I can that we already have. But you know, it happens. Sometimes things just go bad and get forgotten about. So yeah, having, having the pigs and the chickens to clean up after us and eat all of our scraps does kind of take away from that guilt of wasting. When we built this house, we put in full size, a full size, this is all refrigerator right here. We put in a full sized stand up fridge and freezer and I have zero regrets about that. I use every bit of this space and in fact, I actually really want a cold room in our basement as well that would just add space for storage of things like cheeses, milk, um, produce that comes in from the garden and when our fruit trees start producing. But that's a big project, so maybe this winter. Well, that was incredibly ambitious. The coffee cake is finished. Kids are inside, they're hungry, and I am not even close to being finished. It doesn't even look like I made a dent in cleaning out the fridge, but that's fine. I'm gonna take a break and we're gonna go ahead and eat breakfast. I have to take a few pictures of this for the blog too so I can post the recipe for you guys. And then I'll get back to my cleaning. It's a rainy day. Um, that's why it's really dark in here. It's rainy, cloudy, it rained a lot last night. So there's really not much that we're going to get to outside. So I'm not really in that big of a hurry. All right, here is my peach coffee cake. So this is uh, made with sourdough discard but you can skip that part. You can leave out the discard. If you're not a sourdough person, um, I'll, I'll put both versions on the blog so that you can try this out either way if you'd like. But for now, I'm gonna take some pictures before we eat. Oh shoot, and I forgot to put the icing on. So I guess I'll take a picture now, make the icing and then take another one. All right, I was just gonna make a typical butter and uh, powdered sugar glaze, but I'm gonna try something new. I've got some cream cheese here, and then I've got this suka nut, suka nut, which is just the most whole form of cane sugar. So it's just sugar, but in its most whole original form. I'm gonna try to blend this up. Um, I know when you blend up cane sugar, you get powdered sugar. That's why it's called powdered sugar. But I don't know what's gonna happen when I blend this up, so we're gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna try to make my glaze out of this. We'll see.
Okay, it's pretty powdery, but I'm gonna go ahead and sift it because I don't want my icing to be chewy or crunchy. It sounds really gross. So we're gonna sift this and put it in the cream cheese and see how it goes. Ooh, very, very powdery here. If you guys don't have a Vitamix, it is a good investment. I use my Vitamix for everything. And I do make powdered sugar a lot, uh, which is cane sugar, like white, white cane sugar. Okay, this is what it looks like. Let's see. I'm glad I sifted that because I caught quite a bit there. It was not powdered. Now let's mix this up and see what it looks like. My tiny little whisk is not strong enough here. It's fine. Okay. Just a little bit of milk to start. See how we do with that. Okay guys, this is actually really good. It tastes very natural. I, I don't have another word for it, but yeah, it just tastes very natural. I don't know. Very syrupy. So it definitely has a different consistency than if you were to just use um, cane sugar or powdered sugar in a glaze or icing, but I think it's going to make my peach coffee cake look rustic, if you will. So, let's see. Okay, Sucanat glaze. Oh, it kind of looks caramely. It looks delicious. Very syrupy though, like I said. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty delicious, but let's put it to the test and serve it to the children. They will be honest. Honest critics. All right, let's get a piece here. See what we got. Ooh, this looks really good. Pretty excited about this. Looks very rustic. I should probably get a more even piece for the blog, so I'm gonna use a knife here a piece. It would be better, I think, for pictures. Okay, we're almost ready, kids. Gotta take a picture. What do you think? Does it look delish? Mm -hmm. Okay. I gotta take a picture of this and then we'll eat. Try. That's a new kind of icing. Be honest. It's good. It's good? I thought so. There's a good piece. That will be a good one for the blog. Nice and pretty. See, see everything in there? Peaches, icing. Very good. All right, time to eat. Be honest. Delicious. You really do like it? What about the icing? I like it. It's a keeper? Okay, cool. Ernie, what do you think? Do you like it? Is it good? <laughs> All right.
Breakfast is finished. Now back to cleaning out the fridge. I am determined to get this finished today as well as the pantry because I've got too much stuff on my counter that I have canned and that I need to put away. Some things that I can, I just store up here if I think that we will go through them pretty quickly, but a lot of things get taken down to the basement. So you can see here on the shelf that I'm working on, I have some a little bit of milk. I have two jars of sauerkraut. That big jar of what looks like water, that's actually magnesium bicarbonate. And I add a splash of that to our water or juice every morning. By a splash, I guess I mean like a half cup for me, maybe like a fourth cup for the kids every day. And magnesium bicarbonate actually helps to bring up the oh, cell saturation of magnesium. Um, a lot of forms of magnesium are not easily digested, so you're, you're taking pills, you're not actually accomplishing anything. But mag bicarb is great for actually bringing up your levels. And I have a video on how to make that. I will link in the top right hand corner in cards. Back to making peach jam. My jam recipe is very simple. It's just peaches, sugar, and lemon juice. I do not use pectin. I will link the recipe in the description for you guys. I'm more showing you the process of water bath canning in this video, so that will be more detailed. But the recipe will be detailed, like I said, in the description. After I add my sugar to my peaches, I stir it all up and then let it rest in the fridge for several hours. So while that's resting, I, like I said, I finished my cleaning out the fridge. I'm going to move on to the pantry and just pull everything out and reorganize. My pantries usually look a lot nicer than this, but since it is summertime, it has just kind of been very neglected, but that's okay. There is only so much that one person can do. I think we're living in a really unique time where we are so independent and isolated and focused on the nuclear family that we just don't live in community like previous generations would have. We don't have intergenerational households where maybe a grandparent or an aunt lives with a younger family and there's always one or two adult women there to help with and accomplish daily tasks. That's just not how we do things. So I have to remind myself of that a lot. As I'm trying to do these things like gardening, cooking from scratch, canning, preserving, homeschooling, all of this, I'm gonna fall short in some areas because of this isolated lifestyle that we live in these days. And there's just not much that I can do about that right now. But what I can do is I can change that for future generations. So Lord willing, if my children want me to be around and involved and there to help, then I can start right now setting myself up to be able to be there for them. You know, I hear a lot of women talking about not losing yourself in motherhood and talking about what they want to do with their life once their children are gone. But as far as I can tell, once my children are gone, I will still be their mother. I know I still call on my mom all the time, and she is so wonderful and would drop everything and be there when I need her. But when my children are grown, what I plan on doing with my life is being a mother still. And then hopefully, like I said, Lord willing, being a grandmother and just just being there. You know, I don't know. Whatever I'm needed for, whatever I can add or help out with. I cannot wait for that season of life. I think it's going to be wonderful. Anyway, back to pantry organization. I love using mason jars because I just have a ton of them. I accumulate them all the time because everyone in my family knows that I like to can and they're always giving me jars, which is great. I have all sorts of sizes of jars and they're pretty affordable when you compare them to other storage options. So I use lots of jars, moral of that story, and that's what I'm using here to organize my pantry. I think it looks nice, they're clear, so I can see what's inside of everything, and glass is a good option as opposed to plastic. It is prone to break, you know, there's that. It does happen, that's how we started this cleaning journey, is I had a broken glass and lots of stuff broken in here, but, Oh well, it's worth it. I think it looks pretty when it's all 
said and done. And we are moving right along here. That is peach scrap vinegar, by the way, that you see on the left there with the cheesecloth. That recipe is on my Instagram and I'll link that in the description. Now, you should not really stack jars of canned food on top of each other, but I'm doing it just temporarily because I need some more shelves in here. I have peg holes, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal to have John build me some more shelves to put in here so that I can um, store my jars properly with something in between them. You can also just use a cardboard box in between your jars if you don't have shelves. My peaches have been resting with the sugar in the fridge, so I'm going to take them out, add my lemon juice, and then simmer them to reduce them down into a jam. When you're making jam, you want to simmer until your fruit mixture is very sticky. And while you're simmering, you want to skim the foam off of the top and discard that. This is just about ready, so I'm going to show you the process of water bath canning. First, you want to preheat your jars. That way they are hot as you are adding your hot jam into them. Any sudden temperature shift when working with glass can cause them to shock and break, so you don't ever want your jars to be cold or placed on a cold surface. You want to leave about a quarter inch headspace at the top there. Make sure your rims are clean before adding your lids once your jars are filled. And then place them back into your water bath canner. Now water bath canning, you want the jars to be fully submerged. So I always start with more than enough water that is just at a it's very hot at a slight boil when I'm adding them back in. So once again, I started with hot jars, then ladled in hot jam, cleaned the rims, added my lids and rings. Now I'm removing a little water here, see, because I don't want it to overflow because every time I add a jar in, then obviously that displaces water and the, the level rises. But that's fine because... This canner is really small. I have a huge water bath canner, but I couldn't find it, so I'm using my small one. And that's fine because it holds eight of these little half pint jars, which is fine. I'll have to do several batches, but water bath canning is not very time consuming. It's not nearly as time consuming as pressure canning. So see how all of my jars are fitting in there very nicely and they are all fully covered. Now I'm going to place my lid on, turn my heat up, and process these little half pint jars for five minutes at a boil before removing them from the canner and setting them on a towel so they don't shock and letting them cool. So I will let these cool for eight hours or overnight. See, we're mo moving on to the next batch here and <laughs> Bibby's learning to can here. She's helping me out. But that's it. Water bath canning is so simple. Good morning. It is into the next day and I let my jam cool overnight. You can see I've got enough peach jam to last us for probably a year and that was the goal. My husband and I have this like running joke where at the beginning of the growing season when I first start canning and preserving things like maybe peas and carrots he likes to make fun of me and say, well, you know, at least if the grid goes down, we'll have peas and carrots. And then he says that every time that I can or preserve something else. But by the end of the season, we actually have a really well-rounded pantry of food that will last us well into the next year. I have never been successful at growing enough food to feed us for an entire year. It's a goal. I hope to get there someday, but we are very large people. We eat a lot of food and so, I just haven't made it happen yet, but it is a goal. Maybe one of these days I will get there. Now I'm just going to remove the rings from my jars and then wipe them down. They have a film on them from being in the water bath canner. Just get them all cleaned up for storage and last but not least, I will make sure 
to label them. So, I mean, I know what's in them, but in case I die, then John will know what's in them. Well, that's morbid, but anyway, they're labeled now. So there you go. Water bath canning really is so simple and such a great way to start preserving food. Thank you guys for watching again this week. I will post my peach jam and peach coffee cake recipes on my blog and I'll link those in the description. So click subscribe and hit the like button before you go. I make new videos on motherhood, homesteading, and life on our farm every week.